my name is Thomas and I'm farming three varieties of hemp, one cherry, one T1, and some Auto 5. And we're on the northern part of the Front Range here, just north of Boulder. You see all the ladybugs on there? A couple different species of ladybugs. Yeah, the buckwheat really does a lot more than even just the beneficial insects. You see a bunch of pollinators and parasitoid wasps and stuff that feed off the nectar and pollen from here, but helps the soil for fertilizer and from pathogens. This is Phacelia, and within 60 days, this will put down a taproot that goes 60 inches. Um, so as far as breaking through the hard pans and accessing some of the subsoil water, the roots will follow the roots of these down into those uh, into the subsoil to access that water. And it's a really good one for the beneficial insects. You really see the ones that are eating and controlling some of the spider mites and some of the thrips and other really small insects that are pests for the hemp. Bindweed is like one of the only weeds that I really despise out here. And just because it chokes, it's a choker. Oh, funny, that one wasn't even on the hemp. This is uh, sugar sorghum right here, which puts a lot of sugar in the soil. It's gonna help increase the biological activity, which is gonna increase the nutrient availability to some of these plants. This is what's going to be blooming later in the season, is all this fennel and dill and cilantro. In the same rows as the buckwheat, I planted a bunch of cilantro, so I'm going to come through and mow this. The hopes are that the cilantro is going to come up and supply another blossom for all these beneficial insects after I take the buckwheat out.